All right, today's lesson is Unit 2, Lesson 1. It's starting on page 130. Your warm-up question was, here are some letters and what they represent. All costs are in dollars. M represents the cost of a main dish. N represents the number of side dishes. S represents the cost of a side dish. And T represents the total cost of a meal. It says, what does each equation mean in this situation? So the first one we have is M equals 7 and 50 hundredths, which we know is talking about M is the main dish, and it's talking about the cost, which is $7.50. Next is M equals S plus 4.50, $4.50. Um, a lot of students said S equals three, whereas this is a true statement. It's not what does this equation mean? So if I'm on a quiz, I ask you what the equation means. I'm not asking you what does S equal. I'm asking you what the whole thing means. And what that means is the main dish costs $4.50 more than the side dish, or the side dish plus $4.50 equals the cost of the main dish. Next is NS equals six. In this case, N is the number of side dishes and S is the cost of each of those side dishes. So we could say ordering N number, or sorry, N side dishes at S dollars each costs six dollars. So N times S equals six. The last one, M plus NS equals T. T represents our total cost of the entire meal. So our total cost of the meal is the cost of the main dish plus the cost of N side dishes at S dollars each. It says write a new equation or equations that can be true in this situation. One of those we talked about earlier is S is $3. And the reason we know that is because we can do, um, we could do 750, which is our M, minus 450 equals our S. All right, so that's another equation. We can do, uh, figure out T because M is 750 plus NS is 6, so that equals T. I apologize for the sloppy handwriting. I have to use a mouse in order to write this. So T equals $13.50. So those are just a few um, equations. Oh, the last one, N. Apologize. N equals, well, if we know N times S, which is 3, equals 6, we know that 6 divided by 3 equals N, so N equals 2. All right. As we move on to the next page, uh, our two key vocabulary words are model and constraint. Uh, you guys can read those over on your own. You can find the glossary on page 382. If we get into, once we get into section 1.2, how much will it cost? We're talking about a pizza party. It says, imagine your class is having a pizza party. Think about what information is needed in order to run a smooth party. Write down as many things as you can think about, uh, think of, without getting too specific. What I mean by that is we're gonna ask ourselves some questions. What, how many people are attending that party? But we're not gonna to get too specific and answer those questions quite yet. So some questions might be, how many slices do each per, does each person get? Does each person get? Um, how many total pies do we need? Total pizza pies do we need? What is the cost per pizza? How many slices are in a uh, per pizza pie? 
these are all questions that might be needed. Some people said, how much is tax? How much is the delivery fee? We don't know these answers. Okay, maybe we're not just having a pizza party, but we're having wings. How much are wings and drinks even? All of these questions you might need to know in order to plan your pizza party. As we move on in the book, it says record your group's plan on coming up with the total cost uh, estimate. What would it take to convince the class to go with your group's plan? Now, we did this in class. We talked about it, but we didn't have time to discuss your answers. So what we're going to do, uh, my answers might be different than yours. Each group is going to have a little different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we're going to have 30 people. Okay, so we have 30 people coming to our um, party, and they each get two slices. Okay, so now I'm looking at 60 slices. And again, I apologize about the, the sloppy handwriting. Maybe I can just write it in. So we have 30 people times two slices per people. So we're looking at 60 slices. Let's talk about how maybe now we think, hey, there's eight slices per pizza. So I'm going to take that 60. And I'm going to divide it by 8. And when I do that, uh, I should get 7.5. And that tells me how many pizza pies I need. Now, I can't order a half of a pie, so I'm going to round it up to 8 pizzas. All right? So once I have that information, I know I want 8 pizzas. But now I need to figure out what types of pizza I want. So do I want, let's say I want 4 cheese and 4 pepperoni. Okay. Now I need to figure out what are the prices of that. So if I call in, I'm going to get the best deal maybe. And I'm going to say uh, cheese equals $11 and pepperoni equals $13 per pie. So now if we continue writing down more of these expressions, so some of this could have been written down here. I apologize. Um, write down the expressions. So 30 times 2 divided by or equals 60 divided by, what do we say? 8 equals approximately equals um, 7.5. Five, and then we could say with those four pepperoni and four uh, cheese, we could do eleven dollars times four cheese plus thirteen dollars for four pepperoni, and that will get us our answer of ninety six dollars. Now ninety six dollars, that's great, but we do have to pay taxes. So there's two ways we could do this. We could do ninety six times. 0.06, that's uh, the price of taxes um, in Maryland, 6%, 6 tax. So if we do that, this would equal $5.76 for taxes, but then we have to add it back to the 96 total um, cost of the pies, and that would give us $101.76. Or we could do 96 times 1.06 and that will get us 101 dollars and 76 cents okay and again your conversations that you had with your group could be different with mine because i chose my numbers uh based how i wanted 11 dollars for cheese 13 for pepperoni two slices per person so yours might be different but this is what i'm looking for these e types of equations Okay. Question number three says, and your expressions are the quantity, uh, are there quantities that might change the day of the party? Absolutely. Some of them might be the number of people attending, right? Sometimes kids get sick and they might not come to school. That could be one of ours. Okay. Another one might be 
Uh, is there a special, special um, happening that day? Maybe the cost of the pizza decreases. Maybe you have a coupon. Maybe you found one online. Who knows? And then maybe, like, is there a delivery charge? Is there a delivery charge? Or is Miss Reckendorf, um, this is for this question. I ran out of room. I apologize. Hopefully you can read that. Um, or is Miss Reckendorf going to pick it up? Who knows? Who knows? So we can rewrite our expressions, but now using variables on things that might change. So the first thing that will change is the number of people. So I might put N um, or 2N because each person still gets pizza, right? 2N um, divided by 8, okay? Where N equals number of people. And then we could do something like 4C plus 4P, uh, where C equals cost of cheese and P equals cost of pepperoni in case there was a sale going on. All right. Excellent. Moving on to the last portion of our lesson. What are constraints? What are the constraints? So a constraint is something that limits what is possible or reasonable in a situation. So for example, one constraint in a pizza party might be the number of slices of pizza each person should have, S. We can write that S is less than four to say that each person gets fewer than four slices. Nobody can have four or more slices. So that would be our constraint. Look at the expressions you wrote when planning the pizza party earlier. Choose an expression that uses one or more of your letters or variables. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do 4C plus for P. Okay, where again, C equals money per cheese pizza and P equals money per pepperoni pizza. All right. For each letter, determine what value could be reasonable. For instance, could you have, could the value be a non-whole number, a number greater than 50, a negative number, exactly two? What are we going to say? So both the, um, the cheese pizza and the cost per pepperoni pizza, they can be both a uh, decimal or whole number. Right? They can be both because we can have either, hey, each one costs like $11 or $13, or we could say that they cost $9.50 or $10.25. So it does not matter for money. Both of them can work. Um, what it can't be, it can't be a negative number. Right? You can't say the cost per cheese pizza is negative $7. No, that does not work. So there is one of our constraints. It has to be a whole, a positive number. Has to be a positive number. Or zero if you're giving away your pizza for free. Uh, but most likely that's not going to be the case. And then finally, if it's something on sale, right? You can have a set price where... All right, the lowest cheese for so for our cheese pizza, you might say the lowest price is nine, right? But then you could say, hey, uh, the cost, the greatest it would be, oops, sorry guys, the greatest it could be is uh, what did we say? Cheese was eleven. 
So anywhere, the cost of the cheese pizza regularly would be $11, but on sale, it could go as low as $9 is what that says. You could do the same thing for pepperoni. You could say maybe the lowest for pepperoni on a sale would be, um, let's say, $10.50 for pepperoni. But the highest cost it would be was that $13. So in our scenario, we did not have a special... Uh, we did not have a special, so we had to pay those high points of $13 and uh, $11. Red equations or inequalities this represent some constraints in your pizza party plan. If a quantity must be an exact value, use the symbol, the equal symbol. Um, if it must be greater than or less than. So again, we just kind of talked about that right here, uh, our constraints. Here's our... Here's our constraints on prices, okay? And as you can see, we put that variable in the middle to tell us what our high can be and what our low can be. So our low here was $10.50. Our high here could be $13, all right? So that is our first lesson. Please make sure you all are um, reading the lesson summaries each day. The lesson summary is on page 132 and 133. It's very important information um, that will be helpful in doing your homework. Your homework for tonight, remember, is pages 134 to 136. You're doing questions one through five. Please make sure you submit that by Wednesday, uh, bring that to class Wednesday. You are doing that in your book not online, so I will just check it in class on Wednesday when I return. Hope you have a good day tomorrow with the sub. I will see you next week. Take care.